The theme of the 2019 Open Access Week is open for who? Equity and open knowledge. Staff from James Cook University Library and Information Services spoke to some of JCU's leading researchers about the relationship between equity and open knowledge and its importance for their work. My name is Stephanie Topp. I am an Associate Professor in the College of Public Health, Medical and Veterinary Science here at James Cook University. Um, my research falls into a field that's known as health policy and systems research. Um, the field that I work in is, um, I would say, underpinned by a concern with equity. So why would we bother to study health policy and systems? because we know that currently our current health policies and systems um, for all of their strengths still don't necessarily deliver equitable care uh, to our populations. We see disparities in certain groups of our population um, and that's true within Australia, it's true between Australia and uh, our near neighbours and more generally around the world. The reason one of the reasons that this is the case is that health systems often mirror the inequities that we see in society in general. So the field that I work in is trying to understand how, how health systems can be um, strengthened so that they don't so readily mirror those social inequities so that they can compensate for uh, broader inequities and ensure that the health of everyone is improved. So it's, it's really essential for research scholarly activity, and, and particularly science, I think, but not exclusively, that it is open to the world because the results of research are used to formulate policy and that has economic and social impact on people's lives. Now, if that's the case, then it's, it's absolutely right and proper that that basic information, that basic research is available to the public for whom that information will actually have direct consequence. And I think it's that simple. Yes. I'm Teresa Petray. I'm a senior lecturer in sociology and anthropology. My research is on social change and activism and agency and particularly looking at Aboriginal self-determination. I think equity and access to knowledge is really, really important, especially when we're doing research on social change and social justice, um, to then have the, the outcomes of that research locked away and expensive that people can't access is, is really unfair. And so I think it's really important when we produce knowledge that it is accessible to everybody, um, that we're not creating inequalities when we're doing research about inequalities and how to change them. So my research on social change is, is trying to make the world a better place and trying to understand how people make the world a better place. But if the knowledge of how to do that is locked away and expensive to get to, then I'm perpetuating the problem. Sure. Yeah, I lived and worked in Sub-Saharan Africa for eight years. Um, the average cost of a journal article, somewhere between 15 and 40 US dollars, that is equivalent to the per capita health spend in most of the sub-Saharan African nations where I worked. One of the things that's really important to me is that although I'm working with a particular group of a particular Aboriginal nation, that there are other groups of people who might want to be able to access the research that we're doing and think about how they could apply it in their own context. And open access means that they can find that research, um, that they can uh, make sense of it and think about how it, how it could apply in their context. Most of our research is paid for by the public in one form or another. And the public actually deserve access to that work. That work is the record of humanity's understanding of where we are at the moment. It's our discoveries. In some ways, it's our most precious resource for future generations and ourselves. Why that is hidden behind paywalls for private companies is absolutely beyond me. Uh, I'm old enough to remember when scholarly societies actually published journals and the default was open access. Somehow or other, we, we lost our way corporations took over and I just think we made a mistake and we need to correct it. This data is open to the world and open to all, 
all people and all generations. Um, I feel an ethical obligation in the research that I do to make sure that the publications I produce are open access because the health of the populations who I'm trying to address are the very people who would not be able to pay to get hold of this evidence. Moreover, much of the work that I do myself draws on the experiences um, and therefore the time and generosity of people to explain what they're experiencing in the health system. And I think that it is um, incredibly important that they are able to access these publications that are based on their knowledge, that draw on their experience um, and that reflect their needs. When we do research, we're actually using other people's information and knowledge, often uh, knowledges from different perspectives, from different cultures, and we synthesise it in ways to answer some questions. But that knowledge is actually open access knowledge. It needs to be used by people who are actually trying to address the problems that they're having. They need to actually understand how that research might be used to affect their lives, their livelihoods, their well-being. Uh, but we also need other people to understand what research is being done uh, to make efficient use of limited funding for research. It's important that people can actually see what research is being done on what topics. We don't need more and more Me Too, Me Too research. What we need to do is that this knowledge joins together to create a greater good uh, and a greater public good to actually advance advance things in a way that will actually make this a better world for us all to live in.